mighty ones in the house tonight. Yes, hallelujah. Praise you, Father. This is all for you, Jesus. We're here just to love on you, Father. Yes.
Jesus is lifted high. Jesus is lifted high. Strongholds are coming down. Strongholds are coming down. Jesus is lifted high. Jesus is lifted high. Strongholds are coming down. Strongholds are coming down. Jesus is lifted high. Jesus is lifted high. Strongholds are coming down. Strongholds are coming down. And Jesus is lifted high. Jesus is lifted high. Jesus is lifted high. Jesus is lifted high.
somebody give the Lord some praise in the house tonight. Thank you, Lord. Come on, everybody in this place, just lift your hands. Father, we just come into this house to honor you. Fill this place with the atmosphere of your anointing. We decree that because two or three are gathered in your name, you promise that you are right here in the midst of us. And I decree right now that every yoke of the enemy is broken by the Spirit of the Lord God Almighty. Father, we've come here to worship you, and we decree only good things from your word. We receive it in Jesus' name. All that agreed with that said, amen. Come on one more time. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise. I maybe you feel the anointing in this house tonight, amen. And I want you to know that this is going to be a blessed evening, a blessed moment for such a time as this. You're not here by coincidence. You're not here by chance. You are here by divine appointment of God. Amen. Take a few moments, walk around, hug a few necks, shake a few hands. Tell them tonight is your night in Jesus' name. the Lord. Somebody make a good confession and say, I am blessed. I am healed. I am whole. Right now is the right time in Jesus' name. Well, I'm just excited about what God is doing, and I don't want to take too much time. I, I did get to spend a little bit of time with Brother Castile before the service, and interestingly enough, I uh, he was able to receive some great word from the Lord back many years ago from Lester Summerall, whom I've mentioned recently. And this man is Holy Spirit filled, so I told him just to let God do what he does. Amen. So we're excited uh, to have him in the house. And I didn't know all the things about him before, but I'm, am I correct in this that you played on the last Bear Bryant's team? Is that correct? Played six years in the NFL. Uh, was spirit filled born again when he was in the NFL and he said you needed God to be playing in the NFL amen and I'm sure he'll share some other things but he's now the uh, chaplain at the University of Alabama has been there for 18 years to God be the glory so let's give Jeremy, Jeremiah Castile a big WVC welcome tonight amen God bless y'all. Amen. Thank y'all for having us. Woo! Good looking group of people. Amen. Boy, y'all look good. Amen. I tell my wife, she always look good. My wife wakes up looking good. Amen. I can say amen to that. Uh, you know, a lot of us don't think we are, but I'm going to tell you what God is... Uh, He's blessed us. He's blessed you. And um, <clears throat> tonight we're just going to equip and encourage you. You know, as a former coach, that's what you do with your players. You equip and encourage. Equip them with the instructions on what you want them to do and then encourage them along the way. Sound like God, doesn't it? Are you encouraged? Well, that's what we want to do tonight. I believe this is the year of encouragement. 
This is the year of encouragement. I was sharing with my son today, I said, you know, some things, when you think about sickness and illness, some things, you know, I said, you got some diseases that are contagious. You hang around a person and you'll get what they got. <laughs> Amen? So tonight, we want to be contagious. How about that? That is what we, what we teach. We hope you catch it. So that then you and I can operate at the level and the place and the responsibility of what God's calling you to. I say it's the year of breakthrough. This is the year to see your greatest impossibilities yield to the name of Jesus. I'm, I'm going to say that again, yeah. Do, do you have some things that you have been just steadily proclaiming, naming, and believing God for? And it's one of the, and it's beyond what you can do. Amen? Well, then this is the year of breakthrough. But you know where it starts? It starts with you believing that. You receiving that. You and I have to, we have to, we have to receive it. You know, if you look up the word receive, the terminology has with it a violent terminology. If you look it up in, in its original, you know what it means? To take violently. So this breakthrough of the impossibility that you've been just, hey man, how do I get through? You, preach this, uh, the handout you have, I, I, God gave me this message the first time was for our church, Covenant Ayers this year, we preached it back in February and one of the greatest things that when you are believing for breakthrough, you, the enemy will use is discouragement. He'll get you discouraged. You know, my playing football, you know, you can you, you, you ever watch your favorite team play? You watch your favorite team play? Can you just look down there at times from where you're sitting or whether you're watching it by television and say, mmm, boy, they look discouraged right now. Mmm, mmm, mmm. <laughs> and usually what precedes the discouragement? What we call is something bad. Right? Right? But do you know for, you can see that in a game and then all of a sudden what happens? Poof. They went from discouraged to encouraging. You went from not believing to believing. You went from not clapping to, Ooh, oh yeah, I believe right now. I'm, I'm here now, yeah, I know how you, you farewell the fans. But see, all of what I'm talking about now is how spiritual battle works. And you're wondering why breakthrough hasn't happened because when that circumstance looked discouraging, God was waiting on some. But you had the long lip. You didn't, you didn't realize the spirit in the spirit, God wanted you to reverse that. That emotion that you that the enemy thought, well, through this circumstance, he, he'll get the long lip. No. When I was 
praise him the most. That's when I'll clap the most. That's when I'll dance the most. Mmm. That's when I'll be encouraged the most. You know, being a defensive back, you have to have amnesia. <laughs> Get B. If you don't have amnesia, you sitting there with the long lip. Well, I'll put it this way. You won't, your lip won't be long for long, and you won't be at that position. It's called next. <laughs> next. What they gonna do? They're gonna replace you. So you know what I learned to do? Amnesia, quick. Play over with. Next, next play. Let's go to it. Fired up. Yeah. You got me on that one. I'm gonna get you this one. And that's why you sitting there as a fan, you 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 you're more emotionally drained than the, the guy that got beat. <laughs> Cause you know what he got? He gotta have amnesia. How come the next play? There's a barrage of them in a, in, in a typical game. How I many? You got 80 plays? He doesn't have time to be sitting there. Well, that may have been the 10th play, the 12th. He got 70 some plays left. He can't get bogged down in one. So you have to have amnesia. You have to think. You. So what I'm sure, this is how God has trained me to think spiritually. And when you allow the Holy Spirit to train you to think this way, then the body of work that God has called you to do, you'll be busy doing it. Seeing what? You know why you can believe personally for a breakthrough? Because you were praying with someone, discipling someone, mentoring someone that you saw breakthrough. Woo! So then guess what you can do? Well, mine coming. <laughs> Yes, Lord. He hello, amen. Mind coming. How come? Because you're seeing it. You're evidencing it. And I'm here to tell you, saints, guess what? The Holy Spirit who lives in you is more powerful than you allowing him to work through you. He wants to do more in you and through you than you are allowing your, what your mind can believe in it. Way more. A whole lot more. God's just looking for some people that will receive this. What I just, let, me, let me tell you how it works in, 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 in football. Because today, it's about 120 degrees. Hey, fellows, who's fired up about scrimmage? Ain't no lights, ain't no cam cameras, ain't nobody in the stands. Who's fired up about that? Coach looking for that guy and say, me? I'm stupid enough to believe. I don't see, yo, it's 120. Oh, Coach, I'll do it. <laughs> Who that sound like? Can I give you somebody that sounds like in the scripture? David. I go out here on the backside and take care of these sticky sheep. No lights, no camera. And knowing it each and every day, he was taking care of those sheep. He was being prepared. <sighs> every day. See, we discount the little things. You wonder why? Well, I ain't seeing no break. What you doing with the little things? How about, like, let me, let me give you a little thing that we, oh, attitude. Woo. So when it's 125 degrees, you know what I had to learn how to do? Keep a positive attitude. 
One good said, well, it's hot out here today. Oh, I am so hot. What are you going to keep saying that for? <laughs> Every player knows it's hot. Coaches know it's hot. Trainer, you, that's all you, that's all that, that's all that, you know, life and death and power with the tongue. You just, oh, it's hot out here. Oh, it's hot out here. That ain't bringing no life to you. How about quoting some scripture when it's like that? I can do all things through Christ. Strengthen me. I have not seen. It ain't hard. I, Lord, I don't know what you want to do today through me. But I got an opportunity to do what to show this coach. Whoo. Everybody else, it's hard. Well, I, I, hope it, I hope the practice don't last that long. When I used to hear that, I get fired up. Oh yeah, let it be long today. Let this be a long. How come? Coach got to find out who, who he can count on. You want your name up in lights? What do you call? Put me in, Coach. I'm ready to play today. Yeah, amen. When they go to, uh, in the scrimmage. You want your light, name up in the lights? You got you to be willing to win. There's nobody but you and God. You and him. And that's where he starts preparing you and working on your attitude. Woo! Attitude for what? For breakthrough. For what? That next level of living and giving. Where's your level of living at right now? Where's your level of giving at today? Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, World Victory Church need believers that are high in their living and giving. And you fired up, excited, encouraged. Hallelujah. Amen. And when people around you, they catch it. Mmm. They catch that spirit of encouragement. They catch that victorious thought process. You know, I used to look for when I was in the huddle, I looked for BD eyes, the more BD eyes that was when the game on the line. The more eyes that were, they were saying, oh no, I don't know if I want to be in the huddle. I don't know if I want to be in the game. I want, hey, coach, get him out. Get him out the game. <laughs> Time out, coach. Get, get. So a major tool of the enemy is discouragement. What are you, what did you come in here tonight dealing with as a problem that is stealing from you? Life and life abundantly. Man. God created you and me for overflow. Mm. He created you and me for overflow. And we live in a culture that says, well, I, I, I just got enough for myself. Amen. I'm talking about people that say they're saved. They put God in this spiritual box. He can only do so much through me. It's because of our attitude. When you truly understand how you're loved by God the Father, then you start taking limits off of what he can do in and through you. How come? Because there's no height depth width to that love relationship. Hello, amen. There's no height depth. That love relationship. So, so what we're talking, for, for breakthrough to truly happen, I believe you have to truly have come to your identity in the love relationship with Jesus. That if God the Father gave Jesus his son, what he won't give me? It starts with love. All along the journey, it's love. It's that love because that's where the power's at. 
to handle any circumstance, any situation that you and I face. Woo! You can get God's people to, to, to embrace his love for them. That's how I'm standing before you today. I've been victorious because of the love of God. The breakthroughs because of it. That's what God, he wants you to start. So today, receive that. Believe it. Walk in it. When, when the circumstances are discouraging, at its worst, getting God's people. People, how'd you do it? Man, I just believe God loved me. Is that pretty simple? Thank you. Whew. You know, we can get theological. Oh, God loves you. So if you believe that, then you know what? Whatever the breakthrough is, whatever the impossibility is, what he won't do for you if he gave you his son? That means you can receive it. You can believe it. Amen? Hallelujah. His love. All I want you to do for a minute, think for all of us that has been parents. And you're a little one running around the house. They had a natural love, trusting relationship with you as their parent. They looked up to you. They trusted you without a shadow of a doubt. Am I right? Am I right? Why do we don't do that with God? Why instead of looking up, we be looking out? Circumstance. God saying, look up. I don't look up. I can't, can't look. I don't look. Look up. In that love relationship with him. And you know what happened? You'll start believing and receiving and believing in the that God can do the impossible. I mean, let me give you, I, 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 I didn't know my son was going to be in town. Me and Pastor Sean talked about me speaking, so I, I just had worked all this and I was going to go with it. And he, his, he changed his, his flight. And I said, oh, we was talking this morning. And uh, I said, hey. I need to, I want you to come tonight. I want, we want to, I want to use you as a live example, a breakthrough. And I caught him off. I know I can't even like, well, I'm going to tell my dad no. But our youngest son, can come up here real quick. Oh, Pastor, we got a mic. He can, he can, yeah. Will you take this mic and, we're going to just do a real quick question and answer. And so I, I wanted y'all to see a lot. We, and we're just going to talk. About, see, testimony. You, you, you see somebody else's blessing. Guess what you're supposed to be? Well, God got mine. I'm standing believing. Hello, amen? You don't get jealous. Your, your blessing has your name on it. Your breakthrough has your name on it. Amen? Amen? You don't have to be a hater. Be a lover. Just love God, love people, and you start, you'll start seeing God bring powerful breakthrough in you. So we was just talking. I said, well, what we need to do tonight, we need to just talk about how God gave you a breakthrough. Well, I'm talking about something that if you'd walked up to someone and said, hey, this right here getting ready to have you know, I said, no, 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 no. So he called me when he was a senior at Alabama. His senior year, he said, Dad, I'm, I'm going to quit the football team. That was my junior year. Junior year. I didn't even make it that far. And he says, so he called me. He's telling me all this, and I'm loading my gun up, Pastor Sean. You know what I mean? I just load my gun. Mm -hmm. And he says something that, this is my son, Caleb Castillo. I'm sorry, y'all, if I didn't introduce him. Hey, guys, I'm Caleb. <laughs> and so... What do you mean you're going to quit? We don't quit nothing. No, nothing about that. And he said, 
well, I, my dream is to be an actor. And, you know, now I'm going to tell you what the flesh wants to say. Boy, stop lying. <laughs> I've been knowing you all your little life. You need to stop lying. <laughs> Talking about some acting. We ain't even, where where that come from? Us is, us is Castiles. We athletes. <laughs> you talking about art, man. We don't do art. We don't do art. We do, we do. <laughs> right? Amen? That's what we do. Art. But he said something that the Lord said, shut your mouth. He said, this is my dream. When he said that, I couldn't touch that. I hope y'all hearing that, parents. And so he said, then he called me back a few months later, and his dad will not come home for the summer. He had a job. And you know, I'm sitting there, man, you got a job. You don't need to come here. You need to work that job, amen? <laughs> He's, and this is what he said. And so, boy, he, God gave him the words to disarm me two times. And the second time, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, hey, you, you need to work that. He said, I need to get close to God. So God disarmed me again. <laughs> Can't win these, man, I'm telling you what. He comes home, and what do we do that summer? We got close to God. He and I as father and son, getting up, getting in the word, opening up God's word, reading God's word. You know why maybe you're, 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 you're struggling with believing for breakthrough? Next thing we're going to talk about is because you're not preparing. If you're praying and you're not preparing, you don't believe. So when he came on, you know what we started? We started preparing. As funny as it may sound, <laughs> he's going to be an actor right here. <laughs> Pastor, we started preparing. What did we start with? We started with the word. We started with the word of God. We started praying. Oh, y'all got to hear this. Oh, we started with the word, the source, the creator of all things. Oh. That's what we started. Started in the spiritual realm. Worked our way to what we saw. Was, what was the physical side of it? It's a preparation. Oh man, uh, what it's always been really physical. <laughs> getting up, um, getting up. Um, yeah, getting up and just doing, running. you know, running and getting in the best shape possible. Getting tired. Yeah, uncomfortable. Uncom now, listen. Did we know that it was we? We had no clue about the movie Woodlawn. We don't know this. None of it, do we? No. No idea. But we started preparing. Psalms 23 says he'll lead you. And we just started. and so this morning he was sharing share, share with me, share with them about how the do so he he goes out for Woodlawn to be a foot to be a double. Just yeah, that. so in that process, um, if you're familiar with the audition process at all, um, I went out for the lead character, obviously, and it didn't work out that way. And so they had these open tryouts. And I think even before then, like, you know, I, I had chose to go to Alabama as a walk-on when I had scholarship opportunities, and the fact that that took a certain level of discipline and humility even doing that. And so that fed into this process when they asked me to go and um, go to the open tryout. And I'm like, well, I've done that before. I'm not, I'm not, I haven't been the lead guy on anything. And so I go out and I'm doing what I've always done, what I've always prepared. I mean, ever since I was, uh, you know, this high. I mean, even my man back here who played for my dad, he was like, dude, I remember when you were four and five and you were in there doing push-ups next to us in the gym. I'm 
like I don't remember that, but I would say just that preparation. Um, I was telling him in detail. I was like, Dad, I feel like God is such a God of detail because as we were growing up, Dad didn't just teach us how like to just get out and run and be tired. He actually taught us how to run, you know, how to have the correct form. And that's really what we focused on. It wasn't just get out on a track and just, you know, run as fast as you can. So I get out to this open tryout. You know, they want to see you move. They want to see how well you can run, how well you look as a football player. So I get out there, and, um, you know, I'm probably, like, not even a year removed from football. So all of that's still pretty fresh. And, you know, I get out there. I run a 40. I do all these drills. Fast forward, um, I'm in this process that they've not only um, hired me as a, as the, like, lead stunt double for the main guy who was going to star in the movie but now they've scratched that and now I'm the lead and in that process the director the sports director who's done every huge Hollywood movie that you've seen that has sports in it he comes up to me he's like dude even from the first day you came out here he was like you blew me away by the way you run the way you run is beautiful he was like I just had to I wanted you from day one. I wanted to put you on camera. And I was telling dad that story. And I said, dad, isn't that crazy how God is such a God of detail, like in preparation, like something when I was five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old coming up, something that was that I hated, <laughs> to be honest, you know, getting up that early doing this was something that the Lord used for another man to see and to say and to and to be able to promote me. And I think that that to me says that when you're in a season where you're preparing, you never know what God's going to use in your journey to promote you. Amen. Amen. So you got to be Great. thankful for every single part of it because it could be the knee form that you started learning when you were seven years old that God uses for your breakthrough. You know? And so I just thought that we were sitting down over breakfast this morning and, and I was telling them that even like with, with football. Tell you know. them about the, the discouraging part. Being at Alabama never played. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I was sitting there and I said, uh, I, even with harping on the detail of, of the matter, is like, I said, Dad, God is, God is such a God of detail and love that he knows our hearts at such a depth and such a level that like some things just because he knows you, some things to keep you on your path, he won't even let you Amen. see or feel because he knows that it, it'll tug your heart. So me growing up with a dad who played NFL, a, my oldest brother played in NFL, my middle brother played in NFL, it being all around me, I go to the best college in college football and I'm there and I walk on and and um, for four years, I was a walk-on. I was on the scout team. I never played, not one down. But this, and, and, and I was telling him, I said, Dad, you know what? I never truly loved football. It was something that, like, I felt like in, in my obedience to you and to just to the Lord for the athletic ability he had given me, it was something that I was like, okay, yeah, this is what I do right now. And um, while I was there, the discouraging part was, yeah, I never played. I just was there as a tackling dummy, <laughs> basically. <laughs> you know, I earned rings being a tackling dummy. You know, it was like, you know, and and um, but I said, you know, knowing me and uh, knowing the household that we grew up in, if if the Lord had allowed me to get even this much, that much room for pride or vanity or anything that could have pulled my heart towards wanting to pursue football, I would have never heard him when he spoke to me about acting because acting was so foreign to me that he had to bring me to this place of like, in that season of disappointment, 
and discouragement came desperation. I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? What we're talking about step is mentioned. Breakthrough. The impossible. God majors in it. So, he didn't put God in a box as a 21, 22 year old. He said his the vision what? Ha. Hello, y'all hearing me? And when we one day Cable and I was talking about, he said, Well, Dad, he said, it, it really was natural for me to, to, to shoot for that because all you ever called me was champ growing up. And Saints, when you come into this love relationship, we got this, the verse up there on the screen, Jeremiah 31, 3. When you come into this love relationship with him, I believe there's a natural process of you believing God wants the, his highest and best for you. And it doesn't matter how high it is or the impossibilities of it. So here he is. He don't have no, he had no acting class, no nothing. He, I'm, 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 I'm believing I'm going to get the lead role. Still sounds crazy. <laughs> get it. This impossibility, this impossible breakthrough this year, more than likely somebody's laugh or la will laugh if you tell them. But what you got to know is God is faithful and he loves you. And you know what he'll do? He'll move heaven and earth for you. He'll move heaven and earth. When he starts sharing with me how, God, how all of that came about. But the key to it was preparing. All the way down to where he read the script, he, the Spirit spoke and said, this is yours. How come? Because God loves you that if we can get God's people to start realizing he's a God of the break. That which seems impossible to man is possible with God. And I believe this is where God says, you know what? This is where we're supposed to be living. It's where we're supposed to be living at. Each and every day we get, we're looking for him to do a breakthrough in that which is, and you get excited about it. You're encouraged about it. And I believe it starts with coming to understand his love for you. Listen to what this verse says, Jeremiah 31, 3. The Lord has appeared of old to me saying, yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Everlasting. When the last time you took time to push everything aside, everything aside and just let him love on you and you loved on him. I know this sounds elementary. I know this sounds like, yeah, I don't, I don't know about all that. But I think in Revelation second chapter, he talks to the first church that he writes the letter to, the church of Ephesus, and he names all of their works, all of their accomplishments, and he says, but I got this one thing. You have fallen, and you need to repent. You've left your first love. What am I saying? I believe breakthrough comes when we understand it's about being versus doing. Be. Be in love with it. Be in love with it. He'll empower you to do. And you know how the doing will be? The doing will be so Anointed you like, I'm not even tired. Whoa, golly. <laughs> you know me, people they they're in the doing so that and they hadn't been being, and so that which they're doing doesn't have the fragrance of Jesus.
said they don't have the fragrance of Jesus. You name the name, the fragrance needs to be there. Huh? What's the fragrance like in your house raising your children? Huh? What's the fragrance like? Was it religious? Huh? ABCD, you got no room for the spirit. The Holy Spirit ain't moving in here. I'm Baptist. I'm Presbyterian. I'm Lutheran. You ain't got time for the spirit. I was eating in Chick fil A, Silicaga, Saturday. I'm talking about fragrance. So I'm sitting there eating. I got to speak in Silicaga at a youth conference, right? Saturday. This past Saturday, March 9th, I run the mailbox there, I got a letter in the mail from somebody I met Saturday. I'm in the, I'm, I'm the Chick fil A, and it's, so I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying to eat that chicken biscuit. <laughs> Take care of the, I'm in the, I'm in the, and the Spirit of God says, see that gentleman right there? I want you to go talk to him. Hmm. I got somewhere to be. I got me. Doing instead of being. See, I disobeyed so many times, I said, well, I'm going to obey this time. <laughs> Anybody been there? <laughs> I won't tell you the gentleman's name, but he wrote me because I obeyed God. Tell my fragrance. Dear Jeremiah, it was <clears throat> the sincerest of pleasures to meet you Saturday morning at the Chick-fil-A in Sylacauga. It was so kind of you to introduce yourself. And our conversation started God day, God's day for me that I can only describe as a miracle. so busy doing you can't hear the spirit and the fragrance and how you interacting oh, we get our God's day oh. just learn how to be Mary a little bit more Jeremiah We're a Vic, just learn how to be like a Mary He does it every day. Sun comes up. Amen? Amen. He know he majors in the doing. And so in our home, what I've tried to, I wanted my job is to understand be. Just in our relationship with them. Parents, just be. The doing. God will empower. For all the doing you and I need to do. All of our breakthroughs, he'll empower. One act of obedience. For some of us, it's one act of obedience where we'll get breakthrough. <clears throat> so for Caleb, and he says, Dad, I, I, I just, it's how I've been raised. It's the atmosphere. Don't leave out of here, and when you get home, the atmosphere changes. Don't leave out of here and let the atmosphere change in your home. Amen? How come? Because you and I are looking for 
the God of the breakthrough of the impossible for 2019 for it to happen. And so God blessed him with that role that all of that people, man, that ain't possible. You ain't never acted before. How are you going to do that? That's impossible. It's called faith. It's called believing your heavenly father loves you beyond what you and I can comprehend. And that's what needs to be overflowing in our love relationship with each other. Woo! Amen? Amen. Amen. And then you know what happens? You take, you take the lit. You, you, now, all things are possible. Because you're in that love. Why do you think so many miracles happened in the first church? Because that was such a powerful love and interaction between the body of believers until God could say, man, I got to go hang out right there. I got to get, whoo, Lord. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. All I was able to get to was one verse tonight. <laughs> Can we do this? I want to pray for those that want to be prayed for tonight. Praise team, can y'all come up? started out or ended 2018 you started out 2019 praying for a powerful breakthrough for 2019 I'd like to pray for you when you come you believe in God for it may be relation a relationship Could be something physical, spirit, I, I don't know. Just to be filled with the Holy Ghost. How about that one? Knowing it, walking in power. Hallelujah. Pastor John, we got this many, you're going to have to help me, brother. And, uh, I know we got some other folks that know how to lay hands on folks and I'll, I'll leave all the work up to Jeremiah tonight. Amen. Pastor, I'm going to start on this side.
Somebody give the Lord some praise tonight. Yeah. Amen. about protecting the glory we've been talking about David what a timely word tonight amen and I believe that I'd be fair enough to say that since you only got to one part of your message that must mean that you've got to come back and finish it amen so got a lot of people that still don't know that we have a Wednesday night service so I'm going to place an invitation time is right maybe later this year for you to come back on a Sunday morning how many of y'all would like to have him back on a Sunday morning amen I maybe received something good from our brother tonight was that powerful amen so how many of you got to see that movie uh, Woodlawn. Let me see your hand. You saw that. So then I'm correct in saying that we got a football star and a movie star in this house in the same night. Praise God. That's awesome. Well, I believe that one of the greatest gifts that God has blessed us with is to be a blessing to other people. That's right. And so our ushers are standing in the aisles right now. We want to bless our brother tonight. And as you know how I am about giving, I believe that since God gave his best gift, that we should always give our best. There are different ways to give, which is on the screen right now. You can text to give. You can give online. You can write a check. Just make it out to World Victory Church. We'll just write him one check tonight. If you are giving online or you're giving by text, if you would take an envelope and just put on there, I'm giving online or I'm texting, that way we'll know the amount to count that in tonight immediately after the service and be able to bless our brother with a large gift tonight. Amen. Make your checks out to WVC or World Victory Church. I 
I didn't mention this earlier, but I know that we have a few guests tonight. We always like to bless you also. So you received, most of you received a card when you came in. If you text WVC welcome, just one word to 95577. When you leave tonight, I want to give you a copy of my book that I wrote, Unbelief, the Only Hindrance to Receiving from God. I have a copy for you, Brother Castile, as well, for you to take, and it'll change your life. It changed mine, and we want to bless you with that tonight. Be a blessing to you. There is a feature in there once you go to register to register for forgiving, but you don't have to do that. We just want to bless you for being a blessing to us tonight. How many have your gifts ready tonight? Amen. Andrea, if you'll come up here and help me with this, we're going to pray over this. Just hold your gift in your hand because I want to bless that seed because do you know the Bible gives us a promise that the harvest has already been ingrained in that seed. And I like what Brother Castile was talking about tonight. See, a lot of you, you haven't experienced that breakthrough because you've been doing rather than being. See, the Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. That's right. In him I live, I move, and I have my being. Right. Did y'all receive that tonight? Yes. So hold your gift in your hand. We're going to pray over that gift. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come in agreement. If any two of us agree is touching anything, it shall be done. Every gift, we thank you, Lord as they give an obedience that the harvest has already come. It's in their hands. We bless it. We receive it in Jesus' name. And all that agreed with that said, amen. Ushers, if you'll pass those buckets real quick, just give us a few more moments. Praise the Lord. Once you've given, if you'll just stand back with me tonight. Let's sing this song one more time to the Lord. How many of you are thankful that you are not a victim, but you've been set free by the power of the blood of the Lamb? Amen. Come on, lift your hands. Let's worship Him one more time. No victim. breakthrough tonight yes, praise God it. and I know see we've been talking this way we've been talking what God's doing this year and this man came in here not knowing the things that God's been saying in this house but remember he said this is the year God said of my healing that's another way of saying this is the year of my breakthrough for you praise God yes. the breaker has gone out before us yes. he's passed through the gates yes. and there's victory on every side yes. amen come on yes. praise the Lord I bless you tonight in the name of Jesus 
And I decree that everything that you are, everything that you are, you are in Christ Jesus. The angels go with you to protect you in all of your ways. And now that you are in Him, God said, I will do great things through them. I bless this week for you and decree that everything that you do will be blessed for the glory of God. Go out, be blessed, and always remember, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. With the